It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So you probably guessed by the title of this video that I've actually got in front of me a set of the hub keycaps prototypes. That's right, I've managed to get hold of a set of the prototypes. A couple of weeks ago, after the Kickstarter campaign had actually been withdrawn, Evan from the Van Keyboards contacted me and said, would I be interested in actually trying the prototypes? Naturally, of course, I said, yes, of course I would. I mean, who in their right mind after getting on board and being willing to get a hundred sets would say no. He did, of course, say that he only had available 60% keyboard kit in the prototypes. And I said, not a problem whatsoever. So into the mail, they went and they turned up today. Now, I'm not going to show you the front of it because it's got, you know, address details and whatnot, but he actually sent it on the 7th of May and today is the 14th. So it only took a week to get here, which for the US Postal Service is incredibly quick. I've had stuff sent from, you know, tech keys using USPS and other things sent as well. And they've taken like the full 20 days or so that they say that things are normally delivered in. So it's really fantastic to get it. Uh, so thank you so much, Evan and the Van Keyboards for actually getting this over to me. Now, I don't have a lot of 60% keyboards that enable me to do a straight up comparison. What I do have is a, a GH60, which is uh, my, my IKEA chopping board mounted one here. And it currently has a Cherry profile set on it, which I think is a really good way to do a comparison simply because of the fact that the hub keycaps is meant to be kind of that in between of the Cherry profile and a DSA profile, as we've seen from some of the pictures on the Kickstarter. So I thought I'd just actually switch over so we can check out that keyboard to start with. I've got some uh, Cherry MX greens in these and it's just a straight up 60% satin PCB you can see there and it's just standoff mounted directly onto a IKEA chopping board. Uh, some rubber bands on the bottom actually stop it from sliding around too badly and it and it does the job. It's it's in fact the same keyboard that has produced the sound sample at the start of our podcast series. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this packet open right now and I'll pull out the keycaps, but what I'm not going to do is I'm actually not going to put them onto this keyboard during this video because I don't know how long it's going to take for me to sort out the different profile heights and lay it all out to, to check it out. But I will, of course, do a second follow up video to this where I've got it on this keyboard and then I can check out and talk about how it feels and the differences and so on and so forth. OK, so I am sorry to disappoint anybody who had expectations that they'll actually see it on a keyboard today, but we'll get to that later. So let's <coughs> crack this open and check it out. I must say, this is an absolutely lovely purple color for this mailing package too. Most of the ones that we get here tend to be pretty boring white. Uh, sometimes you'll get like silver glossy ones, but uh, purple is pretty cool. Ah, okay. So Evan has done me the favor of bundling them by rows. Uh, now, of course, I'm still not going to change from my original plan because uh, that would involve me having to pull all the keycaps off and I don't want to have to do that right now for you. So there's row three, there's row four, five, which has space bar, row one, and there is row two. Black mark is back of key. So excellent. Uh, I'm glad that information was provided simply because I probably wouldn't have had any idea. Oh, I probably could have figured it out, but you know. Um, let's just start with row one. Of course, I will put them back into their respective rows. <laughs> that said, that means anybody who ends up getting these, because I'm sure the hub keycaps will happen. I'm, I'm very sure it will, regardless of how much effort it will take and time. But this is going to happen. I'm confident about that. It just means we will have to all get used to knowing what the profile is and then learning the correct orientation. Uh, unless, of course, there is a way that's easily distinguishable. So there's the black mark on the back of that. 
that you can see and uh, these are 3D printed. It's a pretty good layer height. I can feel the ridges. In this lighting I can't really see the, the ridges very much at all but uh, you can definitely see on the top surface the circular sort of print pattern from the production of these wherever they had them made or whoever decided to print them. The insides, uh, it's a little bit powdery. The stem looks all right. Seems to be pretty standard. And thickness wise, uh, let's have a look. Now, of course, this is only prototype, so you can't expect that they're gonna be exact, but they are just under one and a half mil with the ruler. Now, if I grab a switch, We'll just check out the fit on that. So the back of the key is there. Fits on quite well. And I'm just going to do my usual flick test. Does not come off the stem at all. I'm not seeing any separation from the stem, which is great. So that's row one. It sits pretty high. It feels very, very similar to how a DSA would look and feel. Pretty uniform which are, uh, yeah, cool. Let's move along, gather these back up and put them back in. Now, I actually haven't contacted Evan at all since I got these, because I literally saw these in my mailbox, and I was like, oh, sweet, I've got to do a video on these, uh, which has actually been really good, because I hadn't had a lot of stuff to, to do this week. Um, so I will find out what I need to do with these after I'm done with the review of them, if they have to go elsewhere or uh, if I get to hang on to them for mini meetups or anything like that. Okay, so there's row two. So the row two, that's the back with the mark. So if we hold this side profile, you'll see it's got a slight curvature leaning back. So it's, it's kind of uh, frontward angled-ish, which, uh, which is interesting. So if I just line up a couple of these with the right orientation. <clears throat> you know, to be honest, just by themselves, I can kind of feel it just a little bit because when you put your fingers down on that, you can feel that slight tilt. Although it's very slight, it is actually noticeable. So that's that's really interesting. I was not expecting to immediately be able to feel that tilt, that negative angle on those keycaps. Okay, all right, that's cool. Let's go on to row three. I've been sick uh, this past week, as uh, people who've listened to the podcast would know, so I do apologize if I'm coughing and spluttering a bit <clears throat> during this. Okay, so it's very flat, very, very flat, in fact. Now, I don't think I've got a loose DSA hanging around at the moment, um, just to compare it to but it is actually really, really low. It's it's reminiscent of those um, DSA keycaps from the keypads, uh, the phone keypads that you sometimes find in signature plastic grab bags that are very, very short with very short stems. That is kind of the height that it looks and feels like. You can see it's got a much more, I wouldn't call it aggressive, but a much more noticeable curvature towards the front, towards the user, since the mark of that stroke is there in the back. So if I put that and a couple of these uh, one U's down, am I going to notice that? And I definitely do. And that is actually more noticeable than the row two, as a matter of fact. Now, of course, this is in isolation, so it's not necessarily as representative compared to if these were on a normal keyboard because obviously their positions and relative to the home row. 
Now this is row three, which is actually the home row. So you would expect these to have to be comfortable in some fashion uh, because it's the home row. Now that would be the enter. So let's go with just a couple of those and a couple of those. Yeah, that, that's all right. I do not mind that at all. I can feel that towards that bottom edge where I'm sort of pulling up towards. I can definitely feel that lip. But there is a, a certain sunkenness in these. Uh, what I mean by that is when you type on DSAs, for example, you do get a little bit of that cupping of the fingertips um, in, in the actual keycap, right? Because it's spherical. But they're closer towards like scoops. So they're not as deep as scooped homing keys, but they have more of that scoop-like feel to them. It's probably the best way. Like my pads, I've got fat fingers. They actually sit really comfortably in these. That's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so row three, in you go. <clears throat> Yep. Row four. Okay. So that didn't have a mark on it, but that one does. So that's the back. So that's the front. So that curve is once again starting to actually get relatively aggressive in being that negative angle. Um, I would say this would be really interesting to have on a negative angle keyboard because a negative angle keycaps on a negative angle keyboard means you have an even greater negative inclination happening. Now these being the, the lower row towards the user, you're actually withdrawing your fingers in a little bit to type on them. Uh, I wonder if that will make a big difference. So if I've got my fingers there and then I go down, I can't really feel that edge. It does feel weird. I'm not going to say that it feels strange or bad. I think it's just more, it's not expected because that angle tilting forward kind of meets it where I wasn't expecting my fingers to be, or I wasn't expecting that my finger would stop as suddenly as it did. It's almost like I bottomed out on the keycap faster than I anticipated, if that's a way of describing it. Okay, all right. Uh, there's a there's a shift on that side and a, and a shift on that side. So, well, pinky feels fine. I'm good with that. Okay. Of course, all of this opinion may change quite dramatically once uh, it ends up on a full size keyboard and I do a bit of typing. What I have come to realize looking at these is because these are all blanks. Um, not very good at typing with blanks. I'll, I'll say that straight out. So uh, <clears throat> when I start doing a bit of typing on these with these, uh, my typing accuracy may be a problem. But that's okay. And last but not least, row five, space bars. Here we go. So, yeah, it looks like we've had some fitment issues possibly um, or that the stems had an issue with potentially cracking from the 3d print because there is some magic tape on them I'm not hundred percent sure if it's just there to support it structurally so of course I will have to be very careful with that uh, I actually don't know if this is the set that Huey had or not on his um, they don't look terribly discolored or anything like that but I'll have to ask what's up with the tape before I put them on, just so I'm very careful about that, because I don't want to break it, uh, especially if I need to be restoring it to Evan later. So there is the, the profile. I'm assuming it goes that way. Uh, let's have a look at if any of these have a black mark, or if these are meant to be an even. Okay, so row five has 
what appears to be a pretty even profile and I think without looking at the Kickstarter uh, that's the way it's meant to be none of these seem to have any distinguishing features but we got to remember that the spacebar was actually flipped so that's actually the angle that it's at it's designed to have a flip on it so you don't have to go flip your space bars to get that same effect so if I put that in that flip position and I I use my left thumb because that's what I use for space I'd say that's a pretty comfortable angle yeah there's no sort of hard edges whereas if I turn that that's actually still okay but I can feel the edge of that just if I'm rolling so if I'm gonna be doing that kind of action I will feel it but uh, if I do that it doesn't because it's definitely got that lower curvature running through so there you go that's pretty cool uh, I'm, I'm actually first impressions I'm very impressed I thought it would be a good set regardless when I was looking at how the profile was set up but now that I've actually just had a quick play with all of these I'm actually pretty happy with how it feels I'm sure that not everybody will necessarily like it. It's the same as not everybody likes DSA, not everybody likes SA Sculpted instead of SA Row 3. Uh, you know, everybody has personal preferences, each to each own. So this is, uh, it's going to be interesting. If I have an opportunity to, to get to some people, some mini meets and whatnot, then for sure uh, they'll get to check this out. Otherwise, depending on how long it takes for the Kickstarter to come back for round two, then I know that we're doing our next meetup in Sydney is definitely going to be in December. We're still sort of looking at venues and whatnot for that right now. Um, I'll, I'll be sure to bring these to that meetup as well. So there you have it. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much to Evan and the Van Keyboards for sending me these, really appreciate it. Um, I will do a follow-up video after I get a couple of days of these on my GH60 and uh, checking out what that full profile is like. So thank you for coming along and checking out the video, of course. If you wanna see more stuff like this, then of course, please hit that like button, share it with your friends, and also subscribe if you're not a subscription member of uh, our YouTube channel. If you'd like to support us, in uh, any way you can either buy us a coffee with the link below or head over to our patreon and check that out now if you've come across this particular video from anywhere maybe because you're interested in the hub keycap profile and you're not aware our channel as it's called the board podcast is because we have a podcast on mechanical keyboards and of course you can check that out with the links in the description of the video below as well right and uh, i think that should wrap things up for this video and this week and of course as always until next time happy clacking